Hey guys, so I'm gonna try and put on a happy face for this video, but to be honest, I am feeling kind of super bummed out at this point. I am 36 weeks and one day pregnant and you know I almost feel like I'm coming to the end of the pregnancy and this is a point where I should be super excited about everything and really really throwing stuff together and putting stuff all in its place and just like getting everything ready to the point where I feel like wow we're gonna have a baby here so soon and I do feel that way. I do know that we're gonna have a baby here so soon. I don't think that's not happening, but I feel like because of all of the complications with ultrasounds and things like that right now, I've almost been robbed of like the excitement of the pregnancy at this point and my whole outlook on the pregnancy has changed. Since 34 weeks when I had the news about the first ultrasound going wrong, since last week when I got the news about the second ultrasound going wrong, knowing that I am looking forward to another ultrasound next week that could possibly go even worse, it's just this whole idea of pregnancy has changed from like this this natural thing that I was really really excited about and I was feeling really really empowered for the birth and things like that and it's all turned into this like I don't know I don't want to say a sickness but I just feel all of a sudden like something is wrong with my body like I'm fragile like everything is not going right like I'm just not really excited in the way that I thought that I would be at this point in the pregnancy and and I feel really sad about that and I hope that things turn around soon I kind of almost wish that she would just be born soon so that I can just start celebrating having a new baby as opposed to being upset about the way that this pregnancy is going because it's just not going the way that I thought it was going to. Yeah, I don't really want to talk about ultrasounds or anything like that this week. As you guys know, I have another one coming up and that's all there is to it. At this point, I'm just waiting till then. Oh, let's see. This week I had a midwife appointment and at the midwife appointment we talked about how I am definitely, definitely risk out of a home birth. And so aside from all this stuff going on with the ultrasounds and things like that, as you guys know, I am a VBAC patient, I suppose I should say. So basically, even though I did birth Joe vaginally, because I birthed James via C-section, I'm still considered a vaginal birth after C-section. And so with that, there's already like some amount of risk that is involved in making the decision about whether or not I can have a home birth. On top of that, both of my births, I had meconium in the water. And so what that is, is if the baby is either just ready to make poo because they've been in too long, or if they are under some kind of distress, then they will start to poop in the amniotic fluid. And this poses a risk when they're being born because they can um, inhale it and then it can stay in their lungs and really mess them up. Yeah, so with James's birth, he was in distress and there was meconium in the water. With Joe's birth, there was meconium, but I don't know why there was meconium. Maybe because he was so big, he was just ready to come out and so he did it. But basically that is another risk factor which the midwives are concerned about. I don't 100% understand why they're so concerned because basically once they found the meconium, then we could take the birth to a hospital. I don't understand why we have to start the birth at the hospital just because, you know, there's been meconium before, but I'm not a midwife, so I guess that I'm not fully equipped to understand the reason why that is one of the risk factors. On top of that, Joe's birth is not considered like a straightforward, smooth, natural VBAC. First thing was that the hospital that I went to forced me to have an epidural, and so I was progressing really, really well and having contractions really close together until I got that epidural and it kind of slowed everything down. As you guys know, when I got to the hospital, um, my water broke, I was six centimeters, I was having contractions every two minutes for a minute, like I was ready to go. Then when they gave me the epidural, it was like either just nerves or the epidural itself. Suddenly my contractions were like eight to 10 minutes apart. They weren't as intense. It took, how long was it? Probably like another 13 or 14 hours before Joe was born. And he should have been born a lot sooner after that. And so they did end up augmenting that birth with Pitocin in, in order to get things moving faster. And so there's like one intervention after another intervention. And then on top of that, Joe was OP. So he was actually facing the wrong way. He wasn't breech, but babies are supposed to come out basically facing your butt and he was facing the sky. Because of that, it was a lot harder to push him out. And so in the end, what they ended up having to do in order to get him locked around my pubic bone is hold him there with a vacuum. And then, um, so that's another intervention. And then on top of that, his shoulder got stuck, there was shoulder dystocia. Joe was a really big baby and so his shoulders got stuck, but apparently when you've had one baby whose shoulders have gotten stuck, it's more likely you'll have another baby whose shoulders will get stuck even if they're a lot smaller. So that was another thing. 
thing that required an intervention, which was the episiotomy that I ended up getting. And so basically since Joe's birth was not very straightforward, the midwives are kind of concerned because now I've had one C-section delivery and one really, really difficult delivery and they just don't feel that they'd like to face that at home. So <laughs> that is disappointing. As you guys know, I'm kind of looking at the possibility of being induced next Friday anyways. So I just, I, I don't know, back to what I was saying before, I just cannot believe how differently everything is going now than I thought it was gonna go when I made you guys that video like seven weeks ago talking about how I got a midwife and I was so psyched to have a home birth and everything was going great. So yeah, at the midwife appointment, other than talking about the reasons why I have been risked out of a home birth, sorry, it's really, really hot in here, so I'm getting super sweaty really fast. I'm sure you can see me glistening. The other things that we did was um, we took the baby's heart rate Rate, which was 140 on the Doppler, did a GBS swab. Oh, at this midwife clinic, they let me do it on myself, which was kind of neat because that, let me tell you, is an awkward test to have someone else do on you. If you have not gotten the GBS swab before, Google that shit. <laughs> Yeah, and then even though the baby is apparently measuring in the 11th percentile, uh, my uterus, my like fundal height was still 35 centimeters, which is only one centimeter less than 36 centimeters, which is the amount of weeks that I am. So I don't really understand how she could be that small. And then the last thing that was noteworthy from that midwife appointment was the fact that the baby is head down and she's been head down kind of every time that I've thought about it or every time that it's been checked lately so I'm pretty sure that she is you know head down for the long haul hopefully then that can be one of the things that's actually going according to plan with this pregnancy at this point. I'm sorry I'm so bummed out and that this video is not going to be what it usually is. It just feels like life is really really overwhelming right now like I if this was my first pregnancy I could probably deal with this better because I could just lie in bed and cry a lot of the day, but I'm chasing after James, I'm chasing after Joe, we're fixing a house, we're faced with this dire necessity to buy a new car because our car will not fit three car seats. There's just a lot going on right now and it's really, really hard for me to deal with all of my emotions about what's happening with the pregnancy on top of just constantly being on the go, constantly doing things, constantly whatever. This week Alex said to me, why don't you just drop us off at the park and take some time to yourself, go to the store and whatever. And so I took them to the park and they all ran to play in the playground. And honestly, I just sat in the car watching them play for a while and bawling my eyes out because a part of me wants so badly, to, like really and truly to just lie in bed and spend a couple of days crying and just get over all of the news that I've been given lately and all all of the things that we've discovered about the house and all of the stress that we are under right now, everything. And I, I started like feeling myself kind of getting overwhelmed with my kids and like kind of getting angry with my kids because they don't ever give me a moment to do that stuff. Then I feel guilty because they're my kids and I love them and they are the number one priority in my life. But it's so hard to balance being their mom and being my own person who needs to take care of myself as well. And I don't know, I'm just going through a rough time right right now as you guys can see. But yeah, since I haven't really been doing much celebrating of the pregnancy, kind of everything that we need for the baby has gotten put on a back burner. And so I have a lot to do. I haven't done any shopping for her. I have to wash all the clothes that I kept from the boys and sort through them and kind of see what it is that she can use and what I you know, wouldn't really want her to use. I need to buy postpartum pads. So I'm probably gonna be using newborn cloth diapers again this time. And so I need to buy some of those. I need to buy diapers for the baby because we sold all of our, our small diapers. <sighs> We need a car, she needs a dresser, she needs a carpet for her bedroom. It's crazy. It's crazy how much stuff we have to do. I'm just feeling really, really overwhelmed. And so hopefully next time that I talk to you guys, I'll be in better spirits and I'll have some good news for you. But for now, I'm just stressed and I hope you guys understand and I'll talk to you guys soon. The weird thing that happened that kind of like changed everything from like this amazing happy experience to like, oh, maybe there is something to worry about. She told me, I'm just gonna go review the results with someone before I tell you that, oh, there was a bug on my face, before I tell you whether or not you can clean yourself up. And she left the room and I went, oh no, Alex, that means that someone else is gonna come in here and double check what she did or that they just want us to stick around so that they can send us up to l &D.
her head was found to be measuring three weeks ahead of her body and her body was actually measuring slightly behind what it should have been. So I went back at 35 weeks, which was a couple of days ago, and they actually found that though there was no discrepancy between her head and her body and there was a possibility that that was just a mistake, her body was actually measuring pretty small. She's only in the 11th percentile, which means she's only larger than 11% of all babies. So basically between the two ultrasounds, well they know first of all that there was some discrepancy at the first ultrasound, and at the first ultrasound she was measuring in the 40th percentile. Now that 40th percentile also takes into consideration the fact that her head was measuring so much larger and stuff like that. So although it seems like she's dropped from the 40th percentile to the 11th percentile in two weeks, there's a possibility there was mistakes on the first ultrasound. The next thing which they kind of need to do before they can really diagnose me with anything is do a third ultrasound another two weeks from the last one and so that is gonna be when I am exactly 37 weeks June 24th at 11 15 in the morning at some point in the book it says this is an egg and not all bodies have eggs in them some do and some do not for our family and how James took it is that well mommy is a female and she has eggs in her and is an egg and that's where the baby came from. But for a family where, you know, for instance, daddy might have an egg because daddy has transitioned from female to male or families where the egg actually didn't come from mommy at all, it came from a donor, then that's pretty cool because it doesn't actually say anything about mommy in particular. So really, as you're reading this book and asking questions and, you know, trying to start up a conversation with your kids, it doesn't matter how your family came to be, this book is going to cover it.